in Satisfactory. And we're back at our base where we made a bit of progress. We, we did some good progress. We, we built this bit of a mess of a starter base with just automators and everything else going everywhere in this really sort of disorganized jumble. But I mean, it, it has to be done to begin with to get the through the first couple of tiers. You know, you need to work your way through it and everything else like that. Last session, last episode was basically a, a mega sode. We don't want to keep doing that. We want to keep them a bit shorter and everything else like that. About an hour long is quite long, but for a first starter, where we got ourselves through the first two tiers was quite essential. But what I think we need to do is clear out a bit of space all the way around the edges here, put in some foundations, and then reorganize everything we've got here and have it all sort of coming in. So let's crack on with that. This is something you shouldn't do at home, kids, and that is run with a live chainsaw. <laughs> you should never run with a chainsaw. Health and safety first. I thought I told you before about walking through my base here. That's a live power line there. It is not safe. Seriously. Yes, you. I'm talking to you. I'm just looking around. Yeah, live power lines. Live power lines. Just careful no sense of preservation these creatures so what we have now is just a big flat plane of foundations but that will do for our beginning of factory it will be something that will enable us to organize a little bit better how we're doing everything so the next step I'm kind of like I've got all of this, it's all kind of a bit disorganised. I'll probably just resort it into this area here. This may not even be the final way that we do this factory here either. This will just be a temporary, a secondary temporary way of doing things, like the starter base it was itself. But just get things a little bit more organised, work out what we need, what we want, and get some sort of production lines going in there somewhere. So let's see how we can do that now. This will now stack quite happily to this grid. Okay, so I'm thinking we'll build a storage system over here for where we can actually get things flowing into so we're probably going to want a bunch of these coming across here I'm going to start down the other end though uh, maybe just here maybe a little bit over because it's going to be the first one we're going to bring in here because what I want to build is actually a production line that's going to start building reinforced plates for us and actually start collecting reinforced plates and we also want to do the same for rotors because these are both things that we're going to need so this is going to be the first one this is going to be uh, doing our production line for reinforced plates, just filling us up a nice little chest full there. And what I'm going to need is to work out what the production rate is on this sort of thing. So if we look in here, reinforced plate, oh we could do modular frames as well, and we're probably going to want to get some of those in there as well. So this is going to be a bit of a, again, a bit of a start factory. We'll probably tear it down and build new ones again later. This is how we do it in Satisfactory until you get to the point where you've got like what you need it doing. But it needs six iron plates a minute. And it also needs um, 12 screws. So we need to work out then, if that's how much it's needing, how much we could produce from other machines. So let's have a look. We have the constructor, which we can't afford yet because we haven't got the right amount of plates. But if we go and get the actual plates, we could bring it. Oh, I could really do with a jump pack for jumping backwards and forwards over here. It takes forever to run back and forward, back and forward all the time. So let's go and jump over here. Let's go and grab what we need. There are a couple of methods that you can use. There's like overflow methods and everything else for getting these running, but um, we're just basically getting a basic started up. We're not going too much into ultra efficiency. We are just wanting to give it the basics. So we're going to put one here, one here. This isn't the most prettiest of designs, but we will just. Why won't you? Because I haven't got enough plate. Always the materials. Materials. This is why we need to be able to have that sort of stack of materials out there. Because we're going back and forwards, crafting, building, crafting, building, going back and forth. We need to actually get the right amount of materials and have a nice stockpile of things. And not just these iron ingots. We actually need the materials themselves, the end products built. So this is what we're doing. This is why we want to be in a better position at the end of this episode where we have a few of these things now being produced that are building up as a stockpile that we can just tap into and get into on demand what we need rather than having to sort of run back and forwards and crafting at the bench we want to be able to actually automate a lot of it so this is going to produce iron plates this is going to produce iron plates half of these are going to go off to a storage bin the other half aren't this is going to produce screws so it's going to produce 40 screws a minute so 20 will go off yeah this works 
The nice thing is at this level, it's all nice and easy, the mathematics. We say easy. We have four constructors here. So these four produce, right, let's have a look, 20 plates a minute. So that's 40 plates a minute being produced by these. That assembler down there needs to take 30 plates a minute. That gives us an excess of 10. So we have the full 20 from the first one over there is going to go into there. And then this one's going to split here, 10 going towards it and 10 going off to a storage bin so that we've got plates also being built up at a certain rate. That gives us an extra thing, but that gives us that side. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing on this side here. We could turn around and double the production by also having another two here, but um, and then maybe having an assembler over this side and then producing another load, but this will do for now. And the same, but the same mathematics works exactly the same for the screws here in the fact that these are producing 40 screws a minute each. And because they're producing 40 screws a minute each and that needs 60, the first one can all go in there and then half of this one can also go in there and the other half can go off to a bin. Nice, sorted. However, that's not the end of the story because we also need to be able to put iron rods in here. This is going to take 10 iron rods a minute into here. So we're going to need another uh, constructor behind there that's going to be feeding iron rods into that that are going to be useful for that. So let's go get that sorted. Oops. This one needs to be producing iron rods. Now we can produce 15 iron rods per minute. Now this is where the maths goes again. 15 iron rods, these take 10. So we need 20, that's not going to be enough. Now we could put another one in here and we're going to have to probably do the same mathematics actually. We'll probably have to, if you think about it, one of these could fuel both of these and the other one could sort of fuel, well, yeah, one of them's going to, and then part of its stock is going to have to go into that one. This is where it gets a little bit more complex maybe. So we're going to need two constructors, but we're going to have 10 left over. Oh yeah, no, I, know. I, could, I think I can work it out. We can probably split it if we put it all into one and then split it again. Should make sense. There is a logic to my madness. We will get this, we'll get this balanced. Right, so if we had 30 coming into here, we just need to make sure we can split it nice and evenly between these two. So we'll start with a splitter here. Approaching others clearance. We have a bird getting in the way here. Excuse me, bird, move please. Thank you. And now you're gonna get in the way of my other one, aren't you? <laughs> just don't mind me, you just keep waddling. I'm just trying to build here. Right, so these are now producing 30 iron rods, 15 each. That split isn't actually right because it's doing seven and a half out and then seven and a half down to there. That's going to meet, that's 22 and a half. These only need 10. It's close enough. It's close enough. These will back up a little bit and it will produce a bit extra. But all we'll do is seven and a half will come over here, join with the 15 there. That will make 22 and a half. It comes in here, splits them out roughly about 11 to each machine. These can take 10. That will eventually back up and it will just basically pump the excess out here um that, that one won't but yeah fine it's okay and it will send all of this off oh actually saying that we don't need to do that someone has just figured so actually if we have 30 coming in they need 20 we've got 10 surplus we could actually take one of those out which means you're encroaching another's clearance who's clearance there we are, that'll do. Okay, that worked out. Right, so what's going to happen here is these two are going to come into here. That's going to produce 30 into this. That merges it into a line of 30. That comes to here. We need this. This will split at the moment 15 to 15. If we put another line coming out here, we get 10 coming off here. We're going to get 10 going to each of those machines, which will maximize those. That sends that over, and we get all our maximization there. So that's actually a bit more efficient than I originally set up. I've miscalculated. Um, but this would be a full setup now. We're producing a little bit of surplus of various things and also giving us some stuff. What we also need to do is get the smelters into this. This needs 15. And that needs 15. So we need a total of 30. Uh, make a note of the side here. 30 into the constructors. For the rods. And then the constructors on the other side. Because we have two here. They also going to need... Um, Pine ingots and they need 30 each, so that's 60 into the other side, into the plate side. So we need a total of 90 being smelted. So let's have a look. Right, these produce 30 a minute. So we need two here and one on the other side. That makes that nice and easy, as in its maps. If we don't fall off, I'm going to need some more Ryan rods though. These produce 120 a minute. We need 90. That produces a surplus of 30, which we could pump into another one of these just to produce iron ingots. That works. 
one of these is going to power up all of these. That works really well. So I'm going to probably produce another one of these over here. Okay, I think we've got this working. But there's a slight problem. This isn't going to cut it. These lines actually only take 60 a minute. We need 120 coming down here. That's at the wrong speed. We are going to need to... Well, actually, I just took it out. We can actually upgrade them, but we're going to need some re more reinforced plates, which this whole thing is designed to produce. So we're going to have to manually produce some reinforced plates to be able to actually automate building the reinforced plates. But still, let's go and do those. Okay, I think we have this now. We, we have this sort of calculated. So what's going to happen is... This miner here is going to produce 120 ore a minute. These conveyor belts are the Mark II conveyor belts that can actually transport 120 ore in a minute away. So they can actually transport that full amount without backing up all the way down to here. They're going to come to this splitter. It's going to split in two. So 60 are going to go to the right, 60 are going to go to the left, 60 are going to come over here to the right, split into two lots of 30. These can take 30 iron ore a minute which will then turn into 30 ingots a minute same on this side it'll turn into 30 ingots a minute now this smelter here this one isn't connected up to anything this is going to be just pumping out to a storage bin over there that means we get 30 ingots a minute just being produced straight off the bat but the other 30 is going to come around here split up these will take 15 ingots a minute so we have two of them so it splits it here it's 15 onto each of those and in turn, they will also turn around and produce 15 iron rods. These 15 iron rods will come out to this point here. They'll merge together and then be split because we have in total then 30 being produced between the two of these and we need only 10 to go into each of these and we'll have 10 coming up here. So we'll produce 10 iron rods a minute going into a bin. Plus we also have 10 going into each of these machines. These machines will take only 10 a minute, but they will produce 40 screws a minute from that. So that will be 80 screws in total that both machines will produce. This one will come out, it will split its line in two. 20 will go off to the right and join with the 40 here to produce 60 screws a minute which go into that machine. And then the other 20 go off down this line which will actually become a uh, little sort of item lift and go over the top and will connect in and also be pumped into the bins as well and we'll have 20 screws a minute being produced through there. And that in turn with the 60 screws a minute that are coming out of here will then maximize the speed of this. This will have 60 screws a minute coming in which will produce enough for doing the iron plates. But that's not the only thing that's needed in this assembly for the iron plates. So if we go back to the beginning with the 120 that are coming off here, these split into 60 or along this line. This comes into here, splits into two. So this splits into 30 and 30 again to these smelters, similar to the other side here. 30 into there, 30 into there, that makes it into five, 30. Uh, iron ingots that makes 60 in total that are being produced in here they get merged together and then split again not they need to we could have just fed one directly into each of these but we, we, we split them and merge them together um, and then they're going to turn around and take those 30 and produce 20 iron plates a minute on each of these that's a total of 40 iron plates and just like the other side what we're going to do is we're going to split the first machine in two so 10 goes off towards a bin it'll go up on left and over the top and the other one here will then have the other 10 can merge with these 20 which makes 30 iron plates a minute which this machine can accept at 30 plates per minute which with the 60 screws a minute coming from the other side means that this machine will then produce five reinforced plates a minute and that's automation <laughs> satisfactory in a nutshell that's the kind of maths that you need to start working out and that's the simple level of maths in this if you start doing it now you could how the level you play to this game obviously depends on obviously how complicated you would want to do you can make it all work out all the maths or you can just pump in as many machines as you can but if you want the maximum efficiency that's what you need to do right okay so this is going to produce out to this so we're going to just bring this here and we need five of these side by side for just storing our goods coming off there so we're going to pop these over to here there we go and these are going to store the sort of surpluses that come off here so we've got to work out we've got the surpluses right so first one we got to do uh, is obviously the five per minute of that that comes out quite nicely then we also got to work out we've got two coming over the top we'll probably connect those into here what are these this one will probably connect to this one you mind you mind it's so rude um all right i know it might have been your old stomping grounds but you're, you're moving across my factory
And here we go, there we go. That's the finishing touches there. So all our lines are now connected in. So the surplus lines over here, they come up on lifts now over the top and into their bins on the side. That assembler goes over to its own. There's a connecting line that comes out here. That's the iron rods that have been separated. That will go down there. And then over there, the excess from the smelter will come out as iron ingots and go into that one. And we will have five lots of goods being stored up in those uh, storage bins over there. One final thing to work out then. So we have worked out the production rates and the values to have the most efficient way of working that assembler at the end and also producing a bunch of other goods for us as well at the end of the day. Well, that's not the most efficient, but it is efficient. We're going to get it at this stage without any power slugs and everything else like that and also producing some surplus and other stuff. But what we need to work out now is the power requirements. And that, at the moment, we've only got one type of power supply that isn't automated. It is obviously, it's the biofuels. So we're going to have to work out how many of those biofuel generators we are going to need in order to power up all... So I reckon with my calculations, this is going to need 60 megawatts to power all of this up. And then if we look at our biomass burner, uh, that produces only 30. So technically two of them should power the whole thing, but you probably want a little bit of surplus extra just to be on the safe side. So I'm going to put three in just to be on the safe side. So we've got a little bit of a redundancy. We'll build three of these generators uh, and then plug it all up. So let's work out what materials we need for that. More iron plates. Okay, let's go and sort that out. Okay, so these have all got yellow lights now instead of red lights. So red lights would indicate that there's no power going into them. Yellow light indicates there is no material going into them, uh, but they do have power. And that's because one should still be on a red light, and that's this one over here. Though I don't think it's got a light on it, but... Uh, oh yeah, it does right at the very front there. You can see it's red because we haven't put power on that. And that's the beginning of the whole production chain, and that's this one, it's the miner. So that should now turn around and turn that one green because now it's got power and it can produce... And we can see it's starting, it's mining away, and we should start seeing this whole facility coming together when we see our ore. So let's have a look, there's the ore. And either side here stacking up quite nicely without actually causing a backup. That's going out either side there to 60 and 60 to each side, which will then get split into 30 and 30. And we should see these starting to go green. Yep, there we are, the lights are going green on the smelters. The smelters are starting to produce. And if we see the smelts producing, they should start producing if we come over to here. We've got ingots going out, going around down to our storage bin, but this is now producing ingots that are coming into these bins. And what we should see this start doing, as long as everything is set up right, is we should start seeing iron rods coming through. There was one coming over there, there's one there. Great, so they're merging. These will merge and come into here. Now some will come down here. There we are towards the bin so we can store some iron there but we should also have some coming into these two machines which is then going to produce nails or well, screws I keep calling them nails they're not nails they're screws there should be screws coming through out there it's producing so let's have a look yes there we go so we've got screws coming over here so they're coming out now some of the surplus screws are going to be coming up you can see them going up the lift here they're going to be going over the top there and you can see next to here we also have some additional materials going up on that one, and that is, of course, the plates that are coming out of here. So we've got plates coming through here. They're going to be either rising up through here or heading down on this line into the producer there. They're done exactly the same as the other way. We'll just double check that's all coming through properly, but it looks like it. So iron ingots should be coming out of these smelters here, going into... Oh, we are a bit slowing down because we haven't built that line. So let's build that line. That should empty that. There we go. So there should be more iron ingots now coming out. So these should, that should speed up the production on these ones. We had missed one. It's always worth doing this. Once you've done your line set up, just go back and re-double check it. Okay, so that's now producing all the iron ingots. They're coming through. That's now should be producing sheets to both of these. Yeah, there we are. Some are going up there, but the rest will be coming over to here. And this is now working away building reinforced sheets for us. And um, five a minute of the reinforced sheets should be coming out and start coming into this bin we have a working production line. As it starts to get towards night time, as we're starting to get in the fading dusk here, I do want to bring out, I think it's a good way to finish this video today, one of these. And everyone knows how much of a treat, if you've ever played Satisfactory, how much of a treat bringing this down is. This is the space elevator. Normally I see this in the daytime, so seeing this at night 
with its lights and everything else. It should be pretty cool as it gets assembled. Job done. There goes the warning. If we look up above. There's something up in the sky. Claws are opening. I just love this animation. Bang. <laughs> Bring in the cable down. Cable down from orbit. Connect it in. This is actually a proper design concept, the idea of being able to lower a cable from orbit to create what is known as a space elevator. And there's the platform coming down. Almost very much like Close Encounters of the Third Kind, actually, when you see it coming down. You love the animation of the space elevator when it first comes down. We'll probably move this eventually, but at the moment, this works really nicely. But it sits here. Look at that. I love the lights just flashing up above. I always reminds you a little bit of a fairground ride, but yeah, it's a... That's the, uh, the platform that will shoot up to orbit whenever we need to send things, because the whole aim of Satisfactory is to produce things that we send into orbit. Um, and what we're needing at the moment is something called Smart Plating, which I have no idea how to build at the moment, <laughs> but it is something that will be on the future cards that we need to do. I believe we need to do that to hit the next tier. I don't think we can open... Unless this has opened up the next tier, I don't think just building the space elevator brings the next tier up. I think we've got to do uh, the Smart Plating to get to tier free yeah it needs the space elevator phase one so we haven't completed phase one yet which is to send up the smart plating so once we send up smart plating this facility will then go that one step further and uh, this is why you've got these bits the these entrance bits here so you can actually load in from around here but it is very very cool it's needed for tier three and tier four oh delivery will unlock two tiers okay so yeah, we need to build smart plating. Smart plating gets produced. We need reinforced plates. So building these reinforced plates is going to be quite handy. But we're also going to need to build rotors. And we're also going to need to think probably the modular frames as well. I think they're all going to be part of what is needed for the smart plate. I'll have to look it up. But we'll do that in a future episode. But yeah, look at this. In the, in the night sky. This beautiful night sky. And we have that flashing away. Our space elevator has now arrived. I'm Draken. This is the Draken Gameworks. Hope to see you again all soon. As a quick aside before I go, I just wanted to talk about the fact that I have a couple of other YouTube channels as well. So you may be aware this is a brand new channel. We've just started this, but this is actually my second channel. I have a first channel, which is Draken Gameworks. Definitely go and check it out. I do all my Minecraft content over there, and that's been going for a little while now. It has a bit of a following. It's quite nice, but if you're into Minecraft, Go and check out the stuff on our first channel here. The second channel here is for any other games. At the moment we're starting up with Satisfactory. There may be other games coming through like Spec Star Citizen and stuff as well on here. We shall see. We shall see what it takes, what doesn't take, what I feel like doing, so forth. We also have another channel called Dragon Streamworks as well. That is where I upload any streams that I do in the week because I do stream over on Twitch as well twice a week. And sometimes a little bit more often depending on how I feel throughout the week. So definitely go and check out that side as well because they're all going to be good for you as well. But in the meantime, you guys all take care and we shall see you again soon.